Hi everyone, Zoe here, and in this video I'd like to talk a little bit about um, something I'm calling the myth of independence. But before we get going, I do want to thank the folks who've been kindly supporting my channel every month on Patreon. Um, if you like the work I do and would like to join them in pitching in, I've listed various options you can use over here. Trust me when I say that every little bit helps and is appreciated. Right, on to today's topic. So, um, I'm sure it's true of any neoliberal democracy in the global north, but certainly growing up in America, I had it drummed into me that being ruggedly individualistic and, you know, fully independent were things that everyone should strive to achieve. Now, this also meant that if ever you found yourself dependent on someone else, that was painted as a sign of failure on your part. And then we had terms like a codependency to stigmatize those who relied too much on other people for personal or psychological support. Even in cases where that was a direct consequence of our culture's way of marginalizing those who experience disability or addiction. So I think I'd like to start by saying that whenever you see some pundit um, waxing lyrical about the need for people to take personal responsibility, um, first off, recognize that person is a hypocrite, but also suspect their motives. Whenever you see a politician claiming that there's no such thing as society, or using that to make arguments for vilifying those reliant upon the welfare state, you should seriously suspect their motives. Learn to recognize this as a toxic narrative that's being promoted by the ruling class, whose sole priority has always been the continued exploitation of the labor of the bottom 99% of the population. And they do not care if they destroy all of human civilization in so doing, as we're seeing in this century. So yeah, um, expecting any individual to be independent of everyone around them is an especially useful weapon in the arsenal of billionaires and their corporations and their hordes of legislators that they control through bribery. I'm sorry, I mean um, lobbying, because it's one that the public can be fooled into wielding against itself. I mean, think about it. As children, we're indoctrinated with a wide array of self-belittling and self-hating beliefs designed to ensure that we will become compliant citizens, obedient workers, and unquestioning consumers. We're taught that we shouldn't expect society to look out for us, but rather that it is we who must look out for ourselves. We're told that success or failure is not dictated by our life circumstances, and certainly not by pervasive impacts of systemic privilege or discrimination, but rather by our own individual efforts. If we don't experience success, well, we're chided for not trying hard enough. Of course, it's interesting that the rich don't need to try to succeed because capitalism is automatically designed to funnel wealth upwards. Workers in the most physically and psychologically demanding occupations routinely are paid too little to support a family on. Meanwhile, we have an entire parasitic class of semi-useless professionals earning six or seven figure salaries. Guess what? It's not because they're working harder or because they're independent. On the contrary, they are 100% dependent upon a vast underpaid working class in order to support their lifestyles. Then we have the mainstream media, obviously controlled by a handful of obscenely wealthy individuals with absolutely zero interest in the common good. It should come as no surprise that a key function of the 24-hour news cycle is to prevent us from correctly identifying our corrupt and dysfunctional government and economy as the source of our woes. It's no accident that so many of us live in a state of constant economic precarity. That's just capitalism working as intended. Now, obviously, if the average person realized this, there'd be a revolution, which is why I make these videos. So the job of mass media becomes one of distraction and fragmentation. Basically, it scapegoats already marginalized communities in order to keep us at each other's throats. And then it has the gall to scold us for expecting um, basic human rights like food, shelter, education, and health care. Rather than admitting the truth that the state has failed us, mainstream media gaslights us into believing that we have somehow failed ourselves. 
Now, at its heart, the myth of personal independence is an attempt to obfuscate both blame and responsibility. It shifts the blame for ruining untold millions of lives away from oligarchs and the corporate entities they control and onto their victims. Likewise, it shifts the responsibility for providing citizens with a basic standard of living away from our governments and onto those already enduring decades of state-imposed austerity. This is a betrayal on an epic scale, and I hope it's obvious that any government that refuses to ensure core public services and protections for the majority of its population is by definition illegitimate and needs to be overthrown. So let's take a minute to acknowledge the, um, the profoundly um, antisocial connotations of anyone cheerleading this idea of personal independence. I mean, it may seem to some to be a morally neutral position, but in fact, it's extremely arrogant to aspire to be completely independent from other human beings, to be able to disregard the needs and desires of those around you, to pretend that um, you're somehow apart from society and that you have no real obligations um, to those impacted by your decisions or choices in life. This attitude not only betrays an enormous amount of privilege, but it also erodes our fundamental empathy towards those who cannot attain this ostensible gold standard. I mean, how about the homeless whom we force to sleep on the streets of cities surrounded by thousands of properties kept vacant for profit? How about the disabled who require carers or special provisions in order to survive and to thrive? How about the unemployed um, whose very existence is required by capitalism as a stark warning to workers who would dare to demand fair labor rights? How about any marginalized group that the, um, the ruling class deems insufficiently productive? The value of our lives should not be defined by how much money the capitalist class can extract from us. So celebrating individuals for being independent or stigmatizing others for being dependent well, this only helps to serve those who would exploit and destroy us. As individuals, we should aspire not to some chimeric sense of independence, but rather to a spirit of mutualism. Now, this is the doctrine that states that mutual dependence, far from being a bad thing, is actually essential to societal well-being. Put another way, it's a recognition that we're all individually stronger when we know we can rely upon other people. Society as a whole is better off when everyone, regardless of their current life circumstances, can realistically expect assistance from those around them. For far too long, we've been fooled into believing that um, asking others for help is a sign of weakness, when in fact it's a strength. And it's no coincidence that Britain and America are both showing the warning signs of failed states I mean, for decades now, both these governments have relentlessly pursued an agenda of atomizing and alienating their citizens from one another. This suits the ruling classes very well because a fractured society is unable to effectively organize dissent to oppose systemic injustice. It may come as no surprise then that it's absolutely horrendous for the social fabric. Late stage capitalism teaches us to commodify even the most basic of interpersonal interactions. I mean, should I do this person a favor? What's in it for me? If I ask someone for help, what will they expect in return? Will I derive enough social value from this transaction to make it worth my while? After all, time is money. We have to fight this and restore our ability and our natural instinct to engage with others on a purely human level. We can do this by fostering a spirit of interdependence, by learning to rely upon each other without hesitation or shame, by giving aid whenever we can, in whatever capacity we are able to, without expecting to receive anything in return, by rejecting the demonization of the most vulnerable groups in our society by the mainstream media, and most importantly, by realizing that the ruling classes want us to feel solitary, weak, and desperate, 
So our first step in fighting them has got to be to unite, to strengthen our communities, and to reduce the desperation felt by those around us. To quote Nelson Mandela, a nation should not be judged by how it treats its highest citizens, but its lowest ones. A country having even one billionaire is an embarrassment when there are millions of people starving on its streets. America has 659 and it made 56 new billionaires over the course of the 2020 coronavirus pandemic alone. The same government that, without any hesitation whatsoever, shoveled trillions into the coffers of the ultra-wealthy, dragged its heels for nearly a year over the question of giving citizens a few hundred dollars to stave off destitution. This is the level of corruption and incompetence and betrayal that we are facing. To take back everything they've stolen from us first requires building a strong foundation of mutualism. We need to repair the social safety net faster than our so-called leaders are dismantling it. This requires creating working alternatives to the dysfunctional and broken institutions that capitalism is forcing on us. It requires learning how to reconnect with our neighbors and our communities. And to be honest, it will also require identifying shared common cause with those who we might not normally think of as allies. Only in this way will we be able to establish a dual power structure from which we can challenge the status quo and begin forging a truly just society for everyone. And on that note, I think I will close because my voice is going, very helpful voice, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, please do like, subscribe, leave a comment, all the things, and um, I will see you soon in another video. Take care.